Lester Munson is a principal of BGR, a leading government relations firm here in Washington. He's also a former staff director of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He said the White House should be turning to its allies for help with this situation. Well, it's a potentially very, very serious situation. Uh, the possibility of miscommunication between the U.S. side and the Iranian side is great. The fact that they can't even agree on who did what is not a good sign. Uh, I think it's fairly clear that Iran has made some bad acts here. This is, uh, they're the ones with the motives, they're the ones with the means. They've done this kind of thing before. They've been threatening exactly this kind of activity previously. That doesn't mean it's all good on the U.S. side. The U.S. needs to rally its allies. So far, only the United Kingdom has come out and supported President Trump's statement. So he's got a lot of diplomatic work to do to kind of rally his side on this. This maximum pressure campaign that the U.S. has had, uh, Shinzo Abe had, had met with uh, Trump. It seemed like he had his blessing to go over and try and mediate this sort of thing. That kind of blew up in his face. Um, Almost literally. Yeah, exactly. Um, which brings about the question, who is there to act as a broker to try and get dialogue going? Well, you know, the Germans have kind of kept themselves at arm's length thus far. They may be setting themselves up to be an arbiter here. Of course, they have their own political transition that's about to take place, so it's unclear whether they could do it. It's, it's a, that's a tough call. Frankly, I think the fact that President Rouhani was meeting with President Putin and President Xi recently is actually not helpful. The U.S. needs to be reaching out to China and Russia and get both of those countries on its side. Uh, that's an essential thing that needs to happen here for Iran to really be isolated. So there's there's just a lot of work for the administration to do. It doesn't seem to me that the U.S. president is the kind of guy who's just going to ratchet it down. So, so where do you see things going? Well, I think the good news is that President Trump has been pretty explicit. He's not looking for a military confrontation with Iran. He is not, for all appearances to the contrary, sometimes he can be rather bellicose. He is not a warmonger. He's not looking for new adventures abroad. Uh, so, and, and folks know that, and I think folks abroad know that, even if they're not, even if they always don't think he's the most credible uh, spokesperson for the United States, they know that he doesn't want to have a military confrontation. That's a starting point. Uh, I think he needs to do work with France, with Germany, with others, and get them on his side and at least standing with him on this issue before any real progress can be made. He doesn't want it, but we all know that there can be miscalculations and suddenly right. uh, things blow up. Uh, so what's your concern at this stage, and what would your advice be uh, to the U.S. administration on how to deal with this? Well, I think uh, we need to be very careful, and there needs to be one person who is articulating the U.S. position. So far, we've had Secretary Pompeo, uh, the National Security Advisor John Bolton, the President Trump, all have been making statements that are a little bit different than each other. There needs to be a coherent a sensible approach that one person is articulating that everyone can point to as the U.S. policy. That's critical. Then they need to, again, need to start bringing allies in to, on their side, standing with them. And then he really needs to out, reach out to Beijing, to Moscow, and articulate a message that's coherent and a sensible way forward. Now, the U.S. Uh, Central Command releasing this video, and yet uh, the president of this Japanese shipping company says it, the tank, he's contradicting this, saying it was hit by a flying object, not a mine. So what do you make of all of that? Well, I, I confess, I tend to believe the Department, the U.S. Department of Defense, they're very good at this. This is their job. They're analyzing the situation. I'm going to take their word for it. I, it's unclear to me how much the Japanese uh, ship captain knows about military uh, warfare and how a ship might be attacked. Even if he was there, these things can happen in a moment, and you're really not sure what happened. So uh, while well, I think we need to be careful about any final conclusions, we should take the evidence from the Department of Defense very seriously.